If you're ever having any challenges um, with the practice or you need anything, you're welcome to type in the chat and then I will make sure to address that. Tonight's practice is going to be just based on heart openers. And even though child's pose isn't necessarily considered a heart opener, there is an opening through the back of the heart. And I really love this idea of strong back, soft front, wild heart. And sometimes when we feel like we've just been really strong for a long time, it can be really nice to just melt into the back body. So allow your breath to expand, maybe open up a little space across the shoulders. And then as you exhale, let yourself melt towards your bolster or the earth. And don't worry if it takes you a couple of breaths to get comfortable or to really drop in. That this practice is long and held with its poses. So you have that space. Just take your time. If you have one cheek to your bolster, we're about halfway through. So you're welcome to take the other cheek down. You can just stretch out the other side of your head or neck. If your forehead is to your mat, that's also okay. You can just leave it there. So as we open the chest and shoulders, we're working with the energetic area of the heart. And so before we move into any other poses, we'll just start to call in this intention of compassion as self-care. So the heart center is all about unconditional love. But maybe self-care tonight doesn't even look like doing anything. It's just simply in the way that you talk to yourself. Let's take five more breaths in child's pose. Breathing deep into any spaces of tension and exhaling to completely let go. slowly start to peel yourself away from your bolster you can lift your hips away from your heels and just take your prop either out to the side or in front now this is a really great place just to move through your body so you can start to shift side to side maybe curling and rounding the spine especially if you're feeling pretty tight through the upper body. Movement is medicine that then allows us to really open up into that stillness. So sometimes we need a little bit of movement at the start of practice. So we're ready to be still. Slowly, you're gonna start to walk your fingertips out in front of you for melting heart pose. So as your forearms land towards the ground, your hips will stay lifted above your knees. And then forehead comes towards the earth. Couple of variations of the arms. You can have your palms face down. 
You're always welcome to take your palms together and then float your hands up and overhead so that your thumbs land to the nape of your neck. And if you want a little bit of extra support, grab a pillow and just place it underneath kind of your belly or your chest. So then some of your weight is actually supported. You'll notice in this pose, you don't have to push your body anywhere. But naturally, gravity starts to draw you down. And so we're really stepping away from doing. Starting to step into being. Just simply allowing yourself to breathe as this pose transpires. If it ever feels too much or too deep, you know you can always come back to child's pose where you started your practice and just walk your hands back. The act of self-care is really challenging, especially when we're busy, we have huge to-do lists. But this is when it's most important. And you kind of feel it in this pose that it sometimes feels like a busy pose because there is an intensity of sensation. And so it really is in the hardest moments of your practice that you can call upon that compassion, that it's okay to be wherever you are and to just simply breathe. So let's take five more giant breaths together and see if we can soften into any areas that are feeling resistant or stubborn. The end of your next exhale, you can slowly release your hands to the earth and just start to walk your hands back up and towards your body. And take your hips back on top of your heels. And just land yourself either onto your shins if that's comfortable with a neutral spine. Or you can always scoop your feet out to either side and just come into a cross-legged seat. Close down your eyes and place your hands in your lap. And just breathe. Gently take your chin towards your chest. Just trace a couple of half circles with your head. So bringing your ear over to your left shoulder and then dip your chin all the way through center and right ear over to right shoulder. So again, finding that little bit of movement. It's almost like the reward at the end of a long juicy hold to just rinse out your body of anything that's still feeling kind of stuck. Okay, 
Now, if you need longer with this, you're welcome to stay for a couple more rounds and just meet up whenever you are ready. Otherwise, we'll start to make our way onto our seat. So lean over to one hip. Just bring your feet around for a butterfly fold. So you're gonna bring soles of your feet together. I always like to have props to fold over. Um, so if you have a bolster, you can always take it out onto that angle using your blocks. And then it's a little bit easier just to hug as you fold. And if you don't have a bolster, you can always take props like um, books and just stack them up for your forehead to rest on. Might wanna put a pillow on top just so it's a little bit more comfortable. But the more support you have in a fold, the more you're able to just let go. So once again, coming into that rounded shape of opening up the back of the heart. So it can be really, really taxing on the body to always be strong. Have that strong moral compass and backbone. That strong sense of values. To even just have that strong self-efficacy and belief in ourselves. And so this is a moment where you just get to fold in towards yourself. And allow yourself to be soft. You don't have to be strong in this moment. But everything needs a reset every now and then. Now, as time moves on, you might find more sensation. If it ever feels like too much for the hips, you can always take props underneath your knees. Okay, so that will just support them so that they have somewhere to land and aren't fighting against gravity. And as we move deeper into these poses, I'm going to offer you more silence on my end. So that this becomes a practice of just sitting with yourself and maybe offering some compassion to self for whatever thoughts or feelings comes up in these moments. And a good mantra I like to use is to say, I am doing the best that I can. And just repeat that until it lands. I am doing the best that I can. Even if you're experiencing some resistance or frustration with these poses, or even with yourself or external factors, you come back to that mantra that maybe allows you to embrace this moment. You're doing the best that you can 
maybe everything is actually just okay. It's not perfect. We might not meet our expectations, but we're actually okay right now. Gently start to walk your hands all the way up your body until you come up to standing. You're going to allow your head to come up last. And then bring your knees up through center and walk your hands back so you lean back. Heel toe your feet wide and then just gently drop your knees left and right. Left and right. Bring in some of that internal rotation. And then move to our bellies once again, and you're welcome to use a pillow. I really like a pillow for this next pose. So if you have one available, definitely grab it. Um, and so you're gonna start to make your way onto your belly. I will show you with a block, um, but please don't use a block. Blocks aren't super comfortable. So you'll bring your left cheek onto a block, or not block, <laughs> pillow, and then bring your arms to either a cactus shape, so your elbows line up with your shoulders, or you'll take your fingertips to line up with your shoulders. Okay, so either arms to a T or to a cactus. Left cheek either to the earth or onto a pillow. And then press your right hand into your mat. So right hand right beside your rib cage and slowly start to roll yourself over towards your left hip. So your right hip and shoulders start to stack over top of the left side body. And why I like a pillow here is sometimes it strains the neck to have the headrest heavy against the ground. So to just slide that pillow under actually allows your head and neck to be in perfect alignment. Now knees can be bent or straight, stacked or crisscrossed. There's no perfect variation of this pose, just whatever is most comfortable for you. And if you're ever confused, uh, you can always take a look here. Left arm is either cactus or straight, and then you're just rolling that shoulder over. I like to say at the end, if it feels like you're doing a lot of effort, you're probably doing too much. So you want just the tiniest bit of maybe uncomfortable sensation so that you can actually sit with it and practice breathing through it. And kind of think of this like titration. If you were to mix whole vials of acids and bases together, they would just explode. And that's kind of what happens when we go so deep into a pose that we can't stay. And we kind of have that huge release where we just get out. So instead, you just want to add tiny, tiny drops of discomfort that get matched with your own breath and relaxation practice. So you're slowly building your tolerance for these sensations. Slowly building the tolerance of the nervous system to be able to stay in a state of rest despite discomfort.
You start to notice your thoughts moving elsewhere. Direct them back to the present moment. What are you feeling? What are you experiencing? What are you thinking about? Just this mindfulness additive to the practice of noticing what's happening. So that can be a really powerful tool when we're learning to sit with tiny bits of discomfort is to honor that discomfort. And honor where you feel it, what you feel, and just allow yourself to be in the authenticity of your own body. So often we run away from what we're feeling or we push it way, way, way down. So we don't have to deal with it. And so yoga is one of those places where we're allowed to just feel and to just be. Let's take three more breaths on this side. And then you can slowly start to roll all the way over onto your belly again. We're going to come into a variation to help release a low back. So sleeping frog, you'll slide your right knee out to the side. Just allow your right hip to melt towards the ear. My friends who wanted to work into shoulders, you're welcome to press into your hands to just lift up enough that you can actually thread your left shoulder underneath your body. Palm will face up of that left hand. If you are taking the shoulder opener, I always find some sort of a prop. So a pillow underneath the head can be really helpful. If you don't want to take the shoulder opener, arms can just cradle your cheek or your forehead. Sleeping frog pose is one of my favorite ways to let go of doing and to simply enjoy moving along the waves of your breath. Notice if anything has shifted since the start of your practice. Energetically, cognitively, spiritually, emotionally. Maybe coming back to that intention or mantra 
So I am doing the best that I can. If you have taken this twisted variation, you're welcome to gently slide your hand out from underneath and then all together, we'll slide our right toes down to meet our left. Bend into your knees to pick up your heels and just gently drop your feet left and right, left and right. And that will help to release your low back and sometimes around the SI joints. Now I know sometimes this can be a lot for your low back. So you're welcome to come back to child's pose in between sides. If your low back is feeling pretty all right. Gently take your right cheek to your mat or onto your pillow if you did so on the other side. And then bring your right arm either out to that cactus shape, 90 degree bend, or extend your fingertips long into a T shape. Press your left hand into the earth and start to roll yourself over towards your right hip. Just enough that you feel some sensation into the front of your shoulder or chest. This is my favorite yin pose for opening the chest and the heart center. But remember that it is also about being kind to yourself so that you can enjoy the experience rather than feel like you're fighting against the experience. And that is sometimes the hardest part of this practice. That is also why I believe that compassion has such an integral place within the yoga practice. Because sometimes we can be really hard on ourselves, even on our mats. And we just need that reminder that it's okay to just be where we are. Maybe even to take up a little bit less space with our physical body. Maybe we don't need to be in the explosiveness, but we just get to watch and observe from a place of comfort. You might notice some old patterns showing up as you sit with yourself. Maybe that negative self-talk starts to creep in. Or maybe, maybe you just start to notice some themes or patterns of your thoughts or what you're feeling. One of those themes is often bringing judgment into the practice for 
whatever we're thinking or feeling. And so this is your permission to just let that judgment go. Just take a big, deep inhale breath. And an even deeper exhale. And feel the release of the body, maybe even of the mind. Gently roll yourself all the way back onto your belly. Sleeping frog on the other side. Left knee will start to slide out. And if you want to take that opposite movement of the shoulder, you're going to thread your right shoulder underneath you. And then right cheek can come down to your mat. Although I do suggest take a pillow underneath your right cheek. Your left leg can be at a 90 degree angle, or it could be at less of one or more. It really doesn't matter. Whatever is just the most comfortable for you. When we think of self-care, we often think about doing. So what can I do for myself that would promote more self-love or uh, self-reflection, looking after ourselves? And I encourage you to consider how can you be to look after yourself? Maybe you don't actually have to do anything. You just have to be a little kinder. You just have to have a little bit more grace and offer yourself compassion in those moments where maybe you're not your best self. So in this moment, you don't really have to do anything. But maybe it's just a state of cultivating your self-worth by how you speak to yourself. So whether you come back to that mantra of I'm doing the best I can, or it's something else that's landing with you tonight, just allowing yourself to embrace this state of love.
And gently start to unthread your arm and slide your left toes to meet your right. And this time, just roll onto your back. So however you need to get there. And bring your knees into your chest <clears throat> and just give yourself a gentle squeeze. And you can even rock side to side. So it should feel really, really nice for the lower back. We're gonna add in just a little bit more movement for the low back. So you can bring your hands onto their knees or shins. Keep your legs glued together and just trace a couple of circles in one direction with your knees. So this helps to kind of iron out some of the stickiness of the low back and the muscles around the hips. And then the next time that you move up through center, pause and just move in the other direction. So I'll take one more circle in this direction. And then you have choice in the next pose of what variation of happy baby you want to come into. So you can keep your hands onto your shins and just separate your knees to the sides of your rib cage. Almost like you're doing an upside down child's pose. You can start to reach your hands either inside or outside of your feet. You can also just hold your ankles and you might even stay here or your feet may float up towards the sky. The happy baby offers you that opening of the inner thigh and back of the hamstring while also creating some space in the low back. If this pose ever causes tension in the low back, you can always release your feet down, pick up your hips to take a couple of pillows underneath and then try happy baby from there. So your lower back is actually supported with the prop. Sometimes our low back and hips start to lift off and then it feels like a lot of effort. So this is also another way that you can kind of make this pose a little bit easier. Allow your belly to fill up in between your inner thighs. Knees melt towards the side of your body. Bring your attention to the here and now that you are experiencing. And is there anywhere that you could soften into your tissues? Maybe even just relax into the shape despite any discomfort. Is there any way that you can smooth out those sharp edges by just breathing? For those of you that still have your feet lifted, you can gently release your heels towards the backs of your hamstrings. Take your hands outside of your knees and just draw your knees together. Release the soles of your feet onto your mat. Let's just take a nice, big, good evening stretch. Lengthen your legs long, reach your arms overhead. As you inhale, you might even point into your toes. As you exhale, just drop into relaxation. 
You will need some props for this next pose. Um, and that can be pillows, blocks, or a bolster. So I'll show you all three. And you can just choose what works for you. So slowly roll to either side, whatever is most available. And then press yourself all the way up so you can set up your props. <clears throat> you can imagine that this prop is two pillows. So for those of you with pillows, you're just going to stack them. And then lower yourself down onto your pillows. Hopefully you can see, I'll kind of move my shirt. So that they land about your shoulder blades. And then the back of your head will actually kind of rest on your pillows as well. If you are purely using blocks, you can take the block under your shoulders on the medium height and the block under your head on the highest height. And same thing, you're gonna Rest the block under your shoulder blades. You should feel shoulder blades on the block. And then the back of your skull onto the higher block. Both of those poses, arms come out wide. Finally, if you're using a bolster, you can actually wrap it up if you like. Just keep blocks as they are. Or just take a bolster flat down your mat. So with all of these poses, arms will come out to a T-shape or as wide as is comfortable. Feet can plant with knees dropped in. If you find low back gets a little bit sticky, you can always extend the legs long. Or if you're looking for that hip opening, maybe you butterfly the knees. So I'll just leave the leg variation up to each of you. One final offer, if your low back gets sticky in this pose, is to actually take a block underneath the backs of your hips. And with that variation, I would keep the feet planted and knees bent. So once again, you don't have to do a lot of work to be in this shape. Simply breathing is going to give you that depth of expansion and release. So as we lay here with our hearts cracked wide open, I'm just gonna do a little mindfulness exercise. I just want you to notice maybe any thoughts that you've had recently about yourself that have been unkind or certainly don't fit in the category of self-care. So thoughts can be a form of self-care, but I want you to just find some of those that maybe haven't been lately. And drop the judgment before you even start to go into that. You're just simply noticing. Now I want you to imagine and just picture somebody that you really, truly love. You admire, you want the best for that person. Now imagine that they were actually having these thoughts instead. And what would you tell them if you knew that that was how they were talking to themselves. You knew that they were maybe having a bit of a tough go or sometimes it's not always talking, it's how we're behaving. We, we don't take time for ourselves or we, we don't place ourselves as important. So whatever that looks like, 
what would you tell that person? Now the love that you would give to that person, we're gonna send it towards self. So gently, you can start to slide your hands down in towards your body, kind of down by your hips. And then reach your arms kind of overhead so that your hands reach your opposite shoulder. And you're just gonna give yourself a bit of a hug here. Elbows will line up on top of one another. You might even be able to reach underneath your shoulder blade and get a bit of a good grip there. I just want you to breathe into this embrace that you are worthy of this love as well. Gently unwind your arms. You can stretch them overhead. We're going to find the other side for about three or four breaths. So reach opposite hand to shoulders. Maybe your opposite elbow will be crossed on top. About three or four deep breaths into this tight embrace. Gently release your hands. And we're moving towards Shavasana. Now I know those of you that ask for chest and shoulders, if this feels like the best place for you to land, you're welcome to stay in supported fish. Otherwise, just simply roll off of your props to whatever side is most available. I'll just move your props off to the side and slowly make your way down onto your back. And you're welcome to any movements. So that could be twisting your knees over to the left and the right or hugging knees into chest. But eventually you will find Shavasana. Palms face up so you're open to receiving. <clears throat> and if Shavasana looks a little different today, please know that's okay. Um, Shavasana for me is just a place of rest. So whatever place is most restful for you. And if you're cold, grab socks, grab a sweater, that's okay, blanket. As great as it would be to smoothly transition into Shavasana, sometimes it doesn't happen and we have to wrestle around a bit and that's okay too. So Shavasana is this opportunity to just sit with ourselves. maybe acknowledge ourselves for all the incredible um, talents that we have, all the incredible things that we bring to this world and our personality that we might not always be operating at a hundred and that's perfectly okay. 
if 30% is your 100 one day, just reminding yourself you're doing the best that you can. And on that note, I'll leave you here for just a couple minutes in silence. You don't have to be perfectly still. This is just about coming to a restful state. And I'll bring you out of this shortly so we can close off together and with a short journal prompt. You are so welcome to just stay as you are, laying on your backs, close off there. If you prefer to close off and seated, take the next minute or so to just slowly wake up your body in whatever way feels most nourishing. And if you are joining me in seated, you can just fold your hands to your heart. Self-care is something that can be so, so challenging. And when we're already tapped of our energy sources, it can be really hard <laughs> to do more things, to try to fill that up. And so I offer you the suggestion to see self-care as a way that you can be, a way that you can be still, present, kind and gentle with self. And perhaps it's just in taking the space to do nothing that we actually start to fill up. 
the space to just tell ourselves that we are deserving and worthy of the love that we give to others. So from the bottom of my heart, namaste. Beautiful. If you want to join me um, in journaling, I will say the prompt out loud, but I'll also type it in the chat. And it's a pretty simple one. You might have guessed where we're going. Is just, what does self-care look like for you? And maybe after all of these prompts, what can self-care look like you or for you this week? So how can you bring self-care into your week in a way that won't drain you from having to be another thing on the to-do list? Okay. Thank you for joining me and have a beautiful night. Bye.